Hi, this is Dan and this is Potential Adventure. Welcome back. This is episode number two. And maybe I figured out how to put the title thing on there. So, and it didn't take me half an hour to do it. Don't know, not for sure. Anyways, tomorrow we are gonna be taking off and going down Route 66. This is gonna be part of a one of our big adventures uh, that we didn't even plan on having up until like about four weeks ago when suddenly we realized we needed to do this. Those are the best kind, really. I mean, those are the ones that kind of sneak up on you and they turn out to be some of the best adventures that way. But the plan is we're picking up a pickup truck in Oklahoma City and we're gonna drive down uh, Interstate, I believe it's 40. It's either 40 or 44, I think it's 40. And anyways, we're gonna go down Interstate 40 and we're gonna be bopping off onto Route 66 as much as we can. Now, Route 66 is a very interesting kind of exploration project because it is so different than typically the ones that we do. Uh, typically, when we go to explore something, we say, well, okay, there's a destination, like we're gonna go to Crater Lake. Okay, so we drive to Crater Lake, we explore Crater Lake, and then we drive home from Crater Lake. And that's that's the typical path. There's the ingress, the exploration, and then the egress back out. And you know, that's, that's okay, but this exploring Route 66 is so different. And part of it is because it's the whole thing, the traveling is pretty much the journey. So, okay, if you wanna break it down, yeah, we've gotta to fly to Oklahoma City to get to where we need to go to. But then for six days, we will be on the exploration as we go down Route 66 looking for the various pieces of it and uh, seeing the different landmarks and so forth along the way. And it makes it like a treasure hunt. All day long, we are doing the same thing. We're looking for the different parts of Route 66. Um, it's a lot of people don't understand what Route 66 means to America and, and stuff like that. But um, it, because if you mention it to them, and, and I see this, I say that people would say, hey, uh, what are you guys going to be doing coming up here? And I'll say, well, you know, we're going to go down Route 66. And they'll go, ah, oh, okay. But, but they really have no idea what that means. Uh, Route 66 is, a, they think of it as a highway that's running through the desert and big deal, that's it. But Route 66 has a lot of history that we just, uh, a lot of people don't know about. So Route 66, how many times can I say Route 66 in a vlog? My God. Somebody keep track and write it down and leave it in the comments down below. There it goes again. Route, there, I faked you out, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so anyways, um, getting back to it, it is this Route 66 is a historic road. It was the first highway ever built because prior to it being built, the automobile was still in its infancy. I mean, a lot, a lot of people had cars and as more people started to get cars, they realized that the crappy roads that they had had all those years where they had the horse and the wagons and bicycles and uh, actually motorcycles were just up and coming too. Those of you who own a Harley Davidson, I think it's 1903. That was the first year of the Harley Davidson company. And those of you that own Indians, I think 1901 was their first year. So those were the up and coming of the combustion motor being used for something other than I don't know, did they have them in mowers and stuff like that? But but anyways, this route uh, just is, it, it was the first two lane paved highway that went across America. And when I say across America, it started in Los Angeles and ended up in Chicago. Unless you lived in Chicago, then it started in Chicago and ended in Los Angeles. And that was a big deal. And it also came up at a time when they needed to have better roads uh, in order to travel long distances because everything up to that point was just, like I said, dirt roads and trails and they were muddy and had ruts in them and all that kind of stuff. So this was a big deal. And there's so much more to the history of Route 66. Okay, there's another one. And I'm not gonna get into it right now, but because uh, we'll, we'll probably cover some of that as I take this out on the road, but we're leaving to go out on an excursion. We will be out on the road for six days. And I wanted to show to you today some of the tools that we use. And these are the guidebooks. Did I get all of them? No, I got four of them here. Okay, these are the guidebooks that we have picked up. And I'll show these to you here just really briefly on the camera. I will put links to them down below. But these are the ones that we use all the time when we're on the road. 
and uh, these two specifically. This one here is from Moon, which is a big producer of guidebooks and also other kinds of information books. Like uh, we've got one downstairs that we use for um, RVs, uh, finding places wherever we're hidden. And this is the last one here. Pick that up. Okay, guidebooks are very important because they're written in a way that they're getting you to, they're very cut down in information specific to finding the spots along Route 66. There's another one. <laughs> okay, um, but the main thing that you need to keep in mind is Route 66, a lot of people think that, oh, I could just go down there, uh, get out on the road and, and find these things. And the problem is, is the route itself is broken up into so many individual pieces now you don't know where to get on and get off and see these different things you don't know where they're at so it's always good to have the guidebooks now another book let me show you this one this one here is a book that we bought uh, about Route 66 and it, this is very intense in history. So if you want to learn about the very many details there are of anything, I mean even the, the, the guy who was in charge of the project building the highway from Los Angeles to Chicago, which is not to be named because it'll keep you from counting one more time. Uh, the guy, there's a history talking about when he was born and raised and what he did, but I mean, he was the guy who was in charge of the project. Uh, he was a man from Oklahoma named Cyrus, I think it was Stevens? Cyrus? Let me see here. I'm gonna look real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, hey, Cyrus Stevens. Well, Cy Cyrus Stevens Avery. Avery is the last name. Cyrus Avery from Oklahoma. Anyways, uh, it goes into a whole biography about this guy and it's probably a lot more information than you really want so this is for high detail I'll put a link for that one as well it's very interesting um, and it's got a lot of great pictures and stuff like that so but this is not something that you would use while you're out in the field let me show you the ones I'll go back through these again this one here see with all that stuff hanging out of the top of it these are and just bookmarkers for upcoming events and stuff like that the way that this works is while we're on the route, it's like I had an idea. <laughs> oh, wow, but it left me. I don't even know what it was now. Anyways, um, this one here is her favorite book. And the way that these work is we, when we're out on the route, uh, I will be in the driver's seat and I'll say, okay, where do you want me to go? And she will start looking through the book to see where we are on the map and then what is coming up in the next 20 or 15 or 30 or whatever miles. And we'll go to it. We'll decide, hey, do we want to go check that out? Yes, no. And if we do, then um, she will get us specific directions. Now, typically she runs two books at a time, sometimes even three. So they'll be all together on her lap while we're in the car. And the reason why she has two or three guidebooks is because not every guidebook has everything in it. Not each one has a little bit different details. And the other thing is some of these were written by um, different authors at different times. And the one thing that we found really cool about Route 66 last year when we came down from the Joliet, Chicago area down heading south was some of the things that are, so for instance, let's go back to this one for a second. There is a place in, uh, there's a, a, a place that we went to, it's a roadside, attraction is called the the blue whale um tusca tusca where is it hang on for a minute blue whale katusa 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 where was that that wasn't in illinois that was in i think that was oklahoma katusa oklahoma hang on again Yeah, Tusa, Oklahoma. Okay, if you're reading about that thing in this book, it's in there, but it says in this book that it is uh, been closed down and is no longer being maintained and they don't want people going near it. And there's like a uh, posted sign saying, uh, you'll be shot if you go there, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. That's what this book says. Now this book has a copyright, I think around 2000. So what is it, 2019, that's a long time ago that this book was written so the information in it is not fresh 
we head down to we were heading down the road and we found out from these guidebooks which are updated frequently in fact this one here is the turbocharged fourth edition i think there's a fifth edition out at this point and it says hey the katusa whale is now open again so go check it out and we did and it's open and it's a success story because a lot of the things on the uh, path of route 66 are now coming back to life they've got new owners that are breathing new life into it they put new assets into it and rebuild them and they're trying to bring back the spirit of route 66. i wonder where i'm at on my count right now anyways uh, so anyways, these guidebooks are going to be used by Ange, and she, like I was saying, she tends to have two or three of them so she can cross-reference them because sometimes some of the towns and places along the way, they'll give you details and say, hey, yeah, there's a old post office there or an old hotel there that you want to check out, and this one won't have it. Or this one will have a lot more detail than this one does about how to get to certain places in it. And so she is constantly running these route books. And like I said, I will put links down below if you're interested or if you think you're going to be going out on Route 66. Or if you want to just have good reading so that someday if you get the chance to go out on Route 66 and check it out, you'll be ready. So I guess other than that, I don't know what else there is to add. Other than we're really excited to get going. Um, I've got some new gear that I'm going to be trying out on this trip. Uh, I have a different camera set up than I had for the last time I went. And hopefully this one will work out even better than the last one. Although the pictures I got were great. I'm hoping to shoot a lot more video this time around. And uh, have a lot more to tell. I'm trying a different bag. There's going to be some gear reviews. I'm trying a new uh, bag that since this has got air travel involved, I'm always looking for the perfect bag that you can carry with you. I don't like checking my cameras on my checked luggage and stuff like that. I want to have it with me the whole time. And uh, I'll tell you, something new that came up the last time we went, Ange got us some tickets for some place and United Airlines was doing this new thing and it was like uh, for the super economy ticket. And I don't think we'll ever do it again because, well, there's a couple of things. When you get these super economy tickets, what they do is they're, they're cutting down your ability to do other things differently. Uh, one of them is that you have no carry-on. So you can have your personal item, which must be able to fit under the seat in front of you. And um, that's it. No carry-on bags, nothing to put into the overhead bin. That's what their whole thing is. And they will check you when you come up to the front. If you have this economy ticket, if you have something that's going to need to go in that bin, they'll make you go back and, and pay the money to get it checked, which is spendy and, and inconvenient. So anyways, um, this trip, once again, we're going to be on an airplane. And what I'm trying to do is find a bag that is able to fit underneath the seat with no problem. Oh. The other thing about those economy seats and it really sucked on this trip was they don't put them near each other. So if you book two tickets, they're going to put you wherever they want in the airplane. So the whole trip, Ange and I, we didn't get to sit next to each other. It was kind of weird. Um, yeah, she was in the back of the plane. I'd be in the front. You know, hey, let's go, dude. Yeah, but whatever. Um, that's part of the deal of getting a cheaper ticket, I guess. And it's just part of the way life is. So but we probably won't be doing that too much anymore because, you know, it's, it's just, it's no fun to travel if you're not there with your buddy the whole way. And uh, so anyhow, I'm looking for this bag that I could get a pretty good amount of my camera equipment into it, but also use it for like the bag to put your snacks or uh, your journal book or you know your laptop all that kind of stuff I've been looking for the ultimate bag that fits under the seat nicely of many different kinds of airplanes um, typically our first wing out of here is on a puddle jumper uh, dash 8 type turboprop you know the big you know, vibrating whatever surprisingly the seats that you can have in those have tons of room underneath them then we go to like a 737 or a Airbus I can't remember what the number is, but you know, these jets, which you would think would be even better, they have the worst setup, especially if you're at a window seat. Um, sometimes you go to put your bag under the seat and there's like a divider halfway making it so you can't even shove your bag underneath there. So in my case, I've been lucky in the past that I've had a black bag and I'll put it in there as far as I can get. And then when the person comes by to see that I didn't get it underneath the seat, you know how they always do that last walk through walking through the cabin. It's black so they can't see it and luckily hopefully it's dark enough down there that they can't you know see what's going on 
and <laughs> I, I hate it. So I wanted to have a bag that fits in there. Um, we do have carry on and all this kind of stuff. So I'm not that worried this time, but just in case in the future, we came into a situation again like that. I want to be prepared. I want to have the right gear. I want to have the right amount of camera gear with me. And this is going to be a long trip. I mean, this will be about a week and a half trip that I'll need to have all of my gear with me and, and functional and operational and enough of it so that I could get the shots that I want to get as well as the video. And so this is going to be fun. Uh, we got a whole bunch of things that we're going to be trying that are a little bit different and um, we'll share those with you as we come across them. Hey, um, one last thing I forgot to mention is if you enjoyed this video, please, please, please subscribe. We would love to have you right now. I've got four subscribers and one of them's my mom, so it really doesn't count. So I guess I got three subscribers and I probably know all those people too. But anyways, we would love to have new subscribers. Hit the bell so that the next time we produce something, you will be one of the first to know. And most of all, if you have places that you've explored and wanna tell me about, I would love to hear about it because if we find some more good ones, we're gonna to wanna to add them to our bucket list of places to go to. And uh, we're always looking for new opportunities and stuff like that. So if you've got some exciting places that you've explored, um, please, 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 Send me a comment down below and I'll get back to you. I'll promise. Unless it's like 12 years from now and I don't check the thread anymore or something. That is so weird to say it that way though. I wouldn't even do that. I would just say, you know what? I'm gonna try to get to everybody that I can who leaves a comment below. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna try. Yeah, I think I could do it. We'll be out on the road a little bit, but you know, it'll, it'll be fun. I'll give it my best shot. Yeah. Holy cow. I had to kind of adjust the light here because the sun moved and it's not hitting the house next door and reflecting it on me. Can you believe that? The sun moved and it's screwing up my videos. Ugh. All these things. Honey, it's way past time. How expensive do I have to be? Need I spell it out before you